right. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's do it, right? All right. I know that you guys are all tired, like the last talk. It's the last talk, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know the feeling. So, um, I would like to start. Um, say thank you for the organizers to um, allow me to be here to talk about Firebase. It's really nice to um, meet another great community. And fun fact: that's the uh, this morning I was in Delfast Bayern, and I flew from. Uh, Munich to here. I just arrived <laughs> and I'm here to, to talk to you about Firebase and web development. Okay, um, so how many of you are web developers? Web developers? Okay, that's great. Uh, Android developers? Okay, iOS developers? Yeah, kind of, okay. <laughs> Designers, no designers uh, today. Okay, all right, nice. And how many of you have read, heard about Firebase? Firebase. Okay, nice, great. So we are going to have some fun. All right. Um, okay. So I'm from Brazil, and the northeast in Brazil, I'm like, but I'm currently living in Dublin. Such a nice weather. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was really tired of like the shine, and sun, 25 degrees every day, right? And now doubling <laughs> four seasons during one day. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> but yeah, and I'm part of the Google Developer Expert program. It's a really nice program uh, to help communities. And also Google has the GDG program, right? And that they are run the, that fast. So it's uh, different, but the purpose is to help communities. So basically, uh, the idea of the Google Developer Expert program is to uh, get some professionals around the world in different fields like marketing, Android, product strategy, web, IoT, and other areas, right? To incentivate to uh, go to conference, talk with the community, uh, share knowledge, and, and do other things. So tomorrow, for example, I'm going to help also during the hackathon. So please come. <laughs> it will be really fun uh, to see what you are going to build with Firebase. All right, so that's the program. And so here is my Twitter handler. And also you can find me on Instagram, Facebook. This is also my email, whorspaf at gmail.com. So if you have any questions about remote work, Firebase, web development, or even the Google Developer Expert program, just reach me out on Twitter via direct message or via email, okay? And my direct message is open, so you don't need to follow me. But if you follow me, you are going to receive a lot of things about uh, traveling. I travel a lot. <laughs> and uh, development. I also like to talk about remote work. Okay. Um, so I would like to invite you to go to this URL. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting. <laughs> Just kidding. So this uh, is a project that I'm working on to help conference, to help speakers, right? Uh, so basically, uh, we have a chat that you can interact with uh, the others and you can ask questions. Okay, to ask questions is really, really simple. You just need to come here, slash question first, like this, slash question, and then your question. Because some people are asking questions inside of the chat and it's uh, not easy to follow when we have a lot of um, message. So basically, uh, the idea for this specific app is to have questions, feedback, polls, quizzes, other things. But for now, we just have the message and the questions. So maybe tomorrow during the hackathon, I can improve this. <laughs> Who knows? But uh, the idea is 
to help also when we get the finish and we have some questions. Usually I have some Firebase stickers, but I knew that <laughs> we have a, fire, um, a app fest tomorrow, Firebase app fest tomorrow, so there's a lot of Firebase stickers. So unfortunately, I don't have nothing to give you, <laughs> but it would be nice if you uh, have some questions. And also the idea uh, later is to answer the questions inside of the, the app. A lot of things to do, but I think it will be really, really fun. All right, so what is front-end web development? Okay, we have this nice URL from Google developers that I explain a little bit, but I would like to have some feedback. What do you think? I know that we have a lot of web developers here, so help me out. I know, it's the last talk, right? <laughs> Okay, so basically what we do is um, a combination of website and web applications. So we have, um, we use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But what we should be able to do? Okay, this is easy, come on. Interact. Sorry? Interact. Interact. Okay, with the users, with the browsers, what else? Okay. okay, that makes sense. <laughs> what else? Mm, no? Yeah, I know. But I heard that there's a lot of cough outside, so you guys shouldn't be tired. <laughs> okay, let's move on. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, libraries, frameworks, uh, Git, responsive web design, testing, developer tools, web performance, command line. So there's a lot of things that we need to handle when we are dealing with web development. Of course, if you're a native developer, do you have a bunch of other things? And yes, much more. Because we are changing a lot of things, right? So I remember that we were using Gulp and then Webpack came. So it's interesting. Because I needed to learn Webpack, I still don't know Webpack. I have no idea how to do that configuration file, but we are using this. <laughs> <coughs> but if you want to become an Android developer or a web developer, Google has this partnership with Udacity that they are giving uh, scholarships. So basically you are going to have the ability to study inside of Udacity and they have a partnership a really nice partnership with Google. But if you are already a web developer, you can get this certified by Google, and it, you have four hours to complete this, and it's pretty nice if you want to um, put it on your resume, you know, maybe it would be really good to have this badge. So you can go to this URL to check this out. So I'm going to Give you a moment to take a note or photos. <laughs> okay, and then um, after this you get the badge and maybe a promotion. <laughs> All right, so one thing that I really like to start with uh, uh, this talk is this quote. So first do it, then do it right, then do it better. I usually, uh, so first do it like, basic level, you know. So you learn something new and you can you want to try, so you go and you do. So when you do it right, it's kind of intermediate level, right? So you already know the things and you learn a, a bit more. And when you do it better, because you are advanced. So that's the idea with everything, right? So today, for example, I'm learning about React and I'm trying to do it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, because we need to explore different things. And that's the, the main message that I, that I get when I uh, read this quote from Adelsman. We need to try different things. We need to explore different things. So basically, if you are a web developer and you never heard about the newest cool things about JavaScript, don't wait for it. Learn, do it, try the different things. All right, so Firebase. So Firebase is a, the Google's mobile platform. 
it's really nice, but it's also really difficult to talk about Firebase nowadays because they have a lot of things. I remember the first time that I heard about Firebase, and I was working with Ember.js. So Ember.js is another framework. <laughs> and back in that days, uh, I was working for a startup in San Francisco, and they were using Ember.js. And I heard about this meetup that Firebase would launch the Ember Fire. So the Ember Fire was a library to combine Firebase with Ember.js. And I was working with Ember.js, and I heard real-time database, seriously? That's pretty cool. And I went there, and that, that was it. Firebase was real-time database. So I couldn't understand. It was easy to, <laughs> to teach people, and for the developers, it was also simple to understand, right? But today is a bit different, you know? <laughs> So we have almost, uh, I think it's 18 products inside of Firebase right now. And we have web, Android, iOS, and we have a bunch of different things. So this right side here, we are not going to talk about this because there's no time. <laughs> but we are going to focus on some, some of the um, developer tools that you can use, okay? So basically, uh, we are going to check this out, like real-time database, what you can do, cloud Firestore, authentication, and other things. So the first thing, if you are um, not developing with Angular, because I'm going to talk about Angular in a few minutes, don't run away, stay with us. <laughs> but if you want to try uh, the Firebase uh, with JavaScript, this is the basic URL that you can go. And now, we are going to uh, try to create a simple application. But before it, let's think about the infrastructure that you are going to use when you put Firebase inside of your uh, web app. So basically, you have your web app here, right? And you are going to interact with Firebase. But Firebase has a lot of products. So that's the idea. But when you insert Angular, you need something else. So basically, what are you going to use is AngularFire. So AngularFire is the official library to use Firebase with Angular. And also, if you want, you can use Cloud Functions. So Cloud Functions is really powerful. So before we are um, receiving a lot of questions about how to change my database, well, you can't. You need to create a Node.js server and then interact with your Node.js server and your Node.js server will interact with Firebase. But now, you have the ability to do it inside of Cloud Functions. And you can do a lot of things. And it's pretty, pretty nice. So if you want to know more about the integration with Google Cloud Platform, you can check this URL. And it's pretty powerful because, for example, Spotify is using Google Cloud Platform, right? And Firebase, when you use Firebase, you are storing also your data inside of Google Cloud Platform. So yeah, that's the magic about the real-time database. When one client is connected and changes something, it goes directly to Firebase, and Firebase will update all connected clients. So you can think about AngularFire like this. AngularFire exposes Firebase capabilities with an Angular-style API. So basically, you can go to this URL, right? And it's interesting because it's called AngularFire 2. So before we had AngularFire to use with the Angular 1. And then the version 2 came. So they launched AngularFire 2. But then we had the version 4 and now the version 5. And it's still AngularFire 2. I don't know what they are going to do with the, <laughs> the name of this, but probably they are going to change with, uh, really soon. So we have observable based, real-time bindings, authentication, offline data, NGRX friendly, and cloud storage. Cloud storage inside of AngularFire is kind of uh, complicated. We had this PR, but it's closed now 
because they changed the Angular 5 to be compatible with Angular, 5, uh, with Angular 5, and now they need to refactor all the code. So they closed the PR, and we have no idea when we are going to have cloud storage inside of Angular 5 too. But the good thing is you can use cloud storage with the JavaScript SDK. All right, so let's do it. Let's try to do it. First, you need to install the Angular CLI. All right, one thing here. If you don't like terminal, if you don't like command line and you're a web developer or you are thinking to become a web developer, well, there's a homework for you. When you arrive at home, you are going to look at your computer, you're going to open your terminal, and you're going to take a deep breath. I love you, <laughs> and you love me. Let's make great things. <laughs> because, you know, uh, command line is really, really important for a web developer. Definitely, you are going to use a command line for something because you are, you are not going to, you know, it's not going to be fun to develop without a command line because it's really, really nice, the things that you can do. So Angular has a CLI, React, Vue.js, and Firebase also has a CLI. So we are going to see this. So basically, you install the Angular CLI, and then you can use Angular CLI with ng command. So ng new in the name of your app, and then you're going to serve it, and boom. So this is really basic, uh, how you can start create a new, a new Angular application with the Angular Fire, oh sorry, with the Angular CLI. But now, that's the great thing. So look, npm install, Angular Fire 2, and Firebase, so Angular Fire depends on Firebase SDK JavaScript. That's why we are inserting this here, okay? So after this, you are going to, get to have the latest and the greatest. And you're gonna need to go to the Firebase console. So basically, when we are talking about the Firebase console, let me show you real quick. What is that? Hmm. Okay, so basically this is the, okay, so this is the console, right? Actually, this is the Firebase URL, firebase.google.com, and then you go to the console. So here you have, okay, that's all good. You have the ability to create a new project, but I already have a project here, so we are going to jump into this guy here. All right, so basically you need to create the project and you are going to have the dashboard of that project that you're gonna use. All right, so let's go back here to the presentation, or maybe not. Okay, what are you doing? Okay, fine. So <laughs> it changed a little bit. But basically, you are going to need this configuration uh, to use with your app. So for example, here we have the storage bucket. And if you need to use cloud storage, you are going to use this URL. If you need to use push notifications, you are going to use this messaging sender ID. So that's all the information that you need to insert inside of your project. With Angular, we use this environment TS file. This environment TS file is really nice because we have the environment TS file and we have the environment prod TS file. So inside of this, you can put all things related to development. So for example, if you have a Google Maps API key, you are going to use one here for development and another in the environment prod for production. All right, basically we import the environment and then we have the Angular Fire module that we are going to initialize. That's pretty much this to use Angular Fire inside of an Angular project. And probably you're going to do the same thing with other 
uh, framework for libraries. Okay, and to add authentication, you need to go again to the console. So let's go to the console. Maybe if I find this. Okay, here. All right. So you go to the console, and then you go to authentication. Sign in method, and with sign in method. you have a lot of different options. So basically here, we have email, password, phone, Google, Facebook, Twitter, GitHub, and Anonymous. So one important thing here, if you are going to use any kind of custom domain, you need to add here. So for example, I have some projects inside of Factblitz.io that I'm using um, custom domain here, okay? And for Google, it's the simplest one. For Twitter, for example, you need to go to developers.twitter.com, create uh, a new app, and then insert the API key and the API secret here. All right. And if you are using email and password, you can also change some templates here, like email address verification, other things, and SMS as well. All right. Let's keep moving. Okay. So basically, I show, I show you this. And then inside of our app module, TS, we're going to do the same thing. So Anglify out module, and then import inside of the NEG module. Pretty basic. That's how you use all uh, features inside of Anglify. And then also basic here, we have, we check the out state. So if you, we have a user, we display the user. Otherwise, we display login with Google or uh, Twitter, or whatever you want. And then we have the, um, the signing pop-up here with the Google, and authentication is done. So also, I created this small gist that you can see all information that we get from Firebase. So let me um, go here. And open, uh, all right, put the second one here. Okay, all right, so we have some <laughs> questions here, all right. But what, what I want to show you is this here. So basically you can log in as anonymous, and you can join, and you're going to have a really nice <laughs> face here, little avatar, or you can log connect with Google. When it, the screen, the pop-up is not going to show because I already have an account inside of um, the Firebase. So basically, that's what we have here. So we have the message and we have some questions here. Okay? And... Okay, nice. So, now let's talk about Firestore. And Firestore is the new database. So before, Firebase had only the real-time database, and they created the Firestore because they found some uh, issues with the real-time database, and they wanted to show with Firestore. So Firestore is really powerful. And to start, we go, you go to the console once again, and you have the real-time database or cloud Firestore. And you're going to start in test mode, just for development. And then you have this, this nice structure here. And this structure allows you to design your database in a better way. Because if you see the difference from the real-time database, and Firestore is enormous. So let's check once again the, the console. Okay, so let's go to database. And inside of database, we have real-time database and Firestore. So for example, 
inside of the real-time database, you're going to see that this is basically really giant JSON, that you have a lot of things here, like message users, okay? So let's go to the Firestore. With Firestore, you have the ability to create collections and documents and also sub-collections. So this is really powerful if you need to design your database in a better way. So for the next step that I'm going to do, for example, is add a, a sub-collection here called answers that people can go there and answer that specific question. And also, another powerful thing that we can do now is create a new field called reference. With reference, we can do a reference <laughs> with uh, other documents. So for example, if I want to reference uh, a traveler, I can do that. And also we have different types here, and it's pretty nice because we can do a lot of things with these new types. So that's the basic, uh, the, the basic difference that we have. But let me show you another difference. So let's go again to travel or, yeah, that's it, yeah. Okay, I'm logged in. So let me show you here what happens when I go to my real-time database and I have my user here. Okay, it's online. logged out and I'll go back to my presentation okay and you see here that I'm offline now so basically that's the idea of user presence that we have inside of the real-time database and it's one of the biggest difference that we have because it's a uh, it's a really nice feature so if you need to know that the user is present inside of your app you need to use um, the real-time database Okay, let's go back here, let's go to the app module. We are going to use Firestore, it's the same principle. And what is pretty cool is because we can use just this, DB collections and get the items that you want. So value chains will return an observable and with Angular, you're going to use the async pipe and you're going to display the items. And one cool thing is offline data because offline is really difficult. So if you ever try to implement offline first related to data inside of your app, oh my God, it's a nightmare. And with Firestore, it's really, really simple. So we have this enable persistence and this call here will enable the offline mode. So for example, if you are using uh, that little app that I told you, and you want to ask a question, you can go offline or airplane mode. You can ask the question. The question will be saved locally, and then when you have connection again, it will sync with Firebase. It's pretty powerful. And yeah, it's easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> All right, so when they launched the um, Firestore, Michael, one of the Firebase engineers tweeted about this. So now we have rich query, web offline, docker oriented, and crazy scale. It's pretty good, and you can check in this URL the, the new database and what you can do with Firestore. Also, we have a different way to query the, the, the database, and it's also really nice because to do this with the real-time database, it was really, really strange. <laughs> okay, but what are we gonna do with real-time database? Well, we can do other things, like the user presence that I just told you. All right, 
so basically, um, when you create your web app, you need a hosting. And Firebase hosting is really powerful and is your best friend. <laughs> so once again, let me show you the, the console in Firebase. If I know, where is it? <laughs> What's going on with my Chrome? Uh, okay, maybe this. No. Okay. I have so many different windows here that's... Uh, okay, not Google Contacts, sorry. Also... Ah, okay, this one here. All right. Okay, so if we go to hosting here, so uh, it's really powerful because we have the ability to see the development history, deployment history, and we can hold back easily. So if I need to hold back, it will be really, really easy. So something uh, went wrong with your deploy, you can roll back to the previous version and also, you can connect with a custom domain. It's really, really powerful. Also, you have the default URL to use the Firebase project. Okay, let's see. I have no idea, let me close this, maybe. Come on, what's going on? Okay, let me go back here. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so remember that I told you that you need to love the command line? Yeah, so you can install uh, Firebase tools to be able to do the Firebase deploy. And then you need to log in with your account. And after this, you are going to use the environment prod. So basically what you do is create two different project, projects inside of the Firebase console one for development and another one for production. In this case, I'm using the same uh, configurations because, you know, I'm just testing. And also, you need to make this true, production true, so Angular CLI will do a lot of cool things. And it build dash dash prod. And it will, to, it will um, do all great things that Angular CLI does for you. And then Firebase init. So Firebase init is how you initialize a project uh, to connect with the Firebase console. And then basically what you need to do is public directory with Angular, you're gonna use this. So if you have um, other configurations with React or other libraries and frameworks, you're gonna need also to change this thing here, okay? And then you do the Firebase deploy and boom. That's it. So once again, if you need to run um, code using um, uh, cloud, the, the cloud functions, James Daniels presented this really nice talk in GTG Europe, and you can uh, learn more about this in this URL. Also, uh, the Firebase hosting has an integration with cloud functions that you can transform your uh, static hosting in a dynamic hosting. So when the user change the URLs, you can do something, and it's really, really nice. You can also check this uh, URL to know more about that. So basically, that's what I want to show you. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just, uh, maybe I have 10 minutes, five minutes, or I don't have time. Ten minutes? Oh, cool. Okay, so now I'm going to try to do differently because... All right, so now it's gonna work. <laughs> Let's see if I can um, show you here. All right, so basically what I was talking about Let's see here. Let's start with the app module. So it's pretty basic. 
we have here the Angular Fire module, initialize app, and bring the environment to Firebase, okay? And also, I have the out service responsible for all things related to uh, authentication. And once again, we just need to import what we're gonna use. So in this case, I'm using the Fire Auth real-time database in Firestore. And then I just have this code here for tracking when the user is connected or not. And here is pretty simple. So we have Google login and anonymous login. So for example, if you need to change to use Twitter or Facebook, you just need to, to change this line here and it will be Twitter or you can also use Facebook, okay? All right. And one nice thing here is uh, to know if the user is connected or not. This is how you do it with dot info slash connected from the real-time database. It's a reference inside of the real-time database and it's pretty powerful. Here, I just changing to online or offline if the user is present or not. And here, I update the user data inside of my real-time database. And because I activated the anonymous login, I'm using adorable avatars, like little monsters that you, you can see. So this is pretty much the authentication service that we have. And then we have the home component that's displaying the message. You see, it's really, really simple. So if you want to uh, change the message to use the Firestore, you're going to need to change only uh, this specific call here. And I have the questions component. Once again, let me close this to be able to, to see in a better way. Once again, I have a, here the collection of questions and I'm using also ordering. It's pretty, pretty simple. Created at and to see the latest first. Okay. Questions, authentication, and chat. Also, my uh, chat components is simple. I have only the form, the form here that we are going to use, and the submit. So on submit, I do some, um, for example, the timestamp from the database, and I create a new instance of the user here, a new object with the user that is uh, asking a question or send a message. And the only thing that I do here, I know I can do better, <laughs> but I'm just checking here if it's a slash question. So if it's a slash question, I'm going to add this specific questions inside of the collection. Otherwise, I am going to send as a normal message. And that's how you can do a difference here. So let's go back to my slides. Okay, nice. What else? Next steps. So if you want to know more about Firebase and uh, help also the, the Firebase team, you can go to this Firebase Alpha program. It's really nice. So for example, I got the new dashboard and I was really excited Guys, can I share this? Can I tweet this? Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then uh, the Firebase Dev Summit, they launched the new uh, dashboard. It was really, really cool. Also, Firebase Code Labs. So if you want to um, know more about Android, iOS, or web, and how to use Firebase, they have a bunch of code labs. It's really, really nice. So if you are not coming tomorrow to the hackathon, you can try the code labs to, to learn more about Firebase. Also, they have advanced talks in the Dev Summit, the Firebase Dev Summit. And I created this Angular Firestyle. It's really simple. Not a lot of things that I showed here in this project, but it's really, really simple, really small. And you can start your new project with 
this Angular Firestarter uh, inside of Stack Blitz. Stack Blitz is really powerful because you can code on the browser. And you can use Angular, React, or Ionic, and it's pretty nice. All right, so if at first you don't succeed, call it version 1.0. You know, just call it, okay, this is the, my version 1.0. Let's build the 1.5, 2, 3, and so on. And another quote that I really like is this one. Fail better. <laughs> yeah, the idea is to try again, you know, like keep pushing hard, learning, and also uh, what I always talk about is related to community, is when you learn something new, it's really nice to share with the community. And GDG is a really nice place to do it, like with meetups, you know, uh, workshops and other initiatives. With this, thank you very much for coming. And I hope you enjoy. Okay. Do we have time for questions? Firestore? Oh, well, it's in beta, right? Yeah. But as well as cloud functions. Yeah, but it's really, really powerful. And I, I heard about uh, people using Firestore in, in production. Uh, so they had some talks in the Firebase Dev Summit, and they were using uh, Firestore in production. But if you're using Firestore in production, then and if Google makes some breaking changes, Yeah, the, the best way to, to uh, keep on track of it is participate of the Firebase Alpha program. Because the Firebase Alpha program is like really alpha. So if they are going to do break change, they are going to warn you know, the, the people that they are using uh, Firestore, for example, hey, check this out. We are going to change. So be aware. Yes, yes. Just participate of the Firebase Alpha program. OK. Sure, okay. Uh, actually, uh, two years ago, I used the Firebase, but... Uh, two years ago? Two? Two. Okay. I used the Firebase for deploying a mobile application mm -hmm. to platform iOS and Android. Uh, and the main issue I had at that time is that uh, I had to do the logic in Go, because uh, Cloud Function was not part of Firebase, and uh, the Firestore, Exactly. And yeah, the database, it's, uh, I think with Firestore, it's much better than the say, standard Firebase database. Is that right? Well, uh, the idea that they had is to bring more um, like different things and solve some problems that they had. For example, query, it was really, really difficult. Yeah, querying, it was my killing point. At yes, time, yes. It was hard to do. I know your pain. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was really hard. Uh, but they solved it with the Firestore. Now it's uh, much easier. And they are doing also other things to improve Firestore. Um, so basically what I'm using the real-time database right now is just for user presence. So if you need user presence, you are going to need to use a real-time database. For other things, go with Firestore. Okay, so now you can go back to Firestore yeah, and use the cloud functions. But now I'm going uh, to Firebase Cool. My job is done here. <laughs> Just kidding. What else? Uh, let me see here. Does storage include offline storage as well? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't know who asked this, but yes. Uh, let me check. Well, it should be ordered. Oh, I didn't deploy. Sorry. Okay. More questions? No? Uh, regarding the offline storage. Okay. So you, you said that uh, Firestore includes um, offline storage. What does it mean? Cold storage? I don't know. Using memory? Or how it is? 
yeah, they well, how they do, I have no idea. <laughs> but what they do is like uh, they save locally. I'm not sure if they are using local storage or um, like index DB, you know, but they are saving locally at some point. Yeah, well, basically that's how it happens. Okay. So for example, I'm going offline here, right? And I'm going asking a question here. Um, question, oops. If I, come on. I don't know how to type, sorry about that guy. See? <laughs> What's up? Okay, so. Well, I have some issues with this because it's not clear when it's not connected, but because I need to change some things, I didn't have time. But you see that WhatsApp is here, right? The question is here, but it's not in, uh, in the Firestore. Can you reload the page? Or you reload no, I don't need to reload the page. But if you reload the page? Well, yeah, if I reload the page, it will be there. But look, you see, that's like WebSocket that works. So basically, we have a WebSocket here connected, and when I go back online, it will sync with the Firestore. So that's a really powerful. So when I turn on Wi-Fi and go to the database, okay. So when I go to the console, and then Not real time database, cloud first store. And go to this one, maybe. Yeah, see? So this is syncing. That's how they, they do. They have a WebSock open and they, they listen for change and they save everything locally. When you have connection, they sync with Firebase and everything is good. So this is really nice. Uh, yeah, we didn't have this with real time database. So now we are super happy. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. This feature is really nice. Yeah. yeah because and you can use it with Android in iOS as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when you go to the browser, JavaScript doesn't work. Request uh, TCP, uh, uh, they are like, they are all broken. And mm -hmm. only the circuit allows us to listen to on this connect event and then do something on the next one. Yeah. OK. Yes, yeah. When they launch at the Firestore, they launch it with uh, cloud function support. Cloud function support, for example, every database application is there. Yes. And cloud functions. Yeah, exactly, you can do it. With uh, cloud functions, with the uh, real-time database also, and then uh, with push notifications. Uh, basically, you can use almost everything inside of Firebase with cloud functions mm -hmm. and interact and do some change. So authentication, so you can track also when the user is authenticated and you can do something else. So it's pretty powerful. So basically just change the cloud function and it will be effective. Yeah. Your yeah. Something else? All right. Thank you. <laughs>